Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we're going to take a look at the impact of age on treatment response in patients with major depressive disorder. And the real take home here is that age has a significant and profound impact on antidepressant response. This article by Strawn and colleagues really does a nice job looking at a huge, what they call mega analysis, not just a meta analysis, but a mega analysis of individuals with major depressive disorder. And this is important because so far, really getting a good understanding of how age impacts antidepressant patients is complicated by the fact that there are small studies. The studies are heterogeneous, meaning that there are many different comorbidities and factors involved. But understanding how age can impact treatment response or lack thereof is critically important so that we're not just treating patients in the same old fashion. And we've learned the hard way that just copying what's done in adults and extrapolating that children can have huge and profound implications. And we know that developmental maturation through adolescence often continues. For example, in the prefrontal cortex, the brain's chief executive through the late 20s and even into the early 30s. So we're talking about differentially developing neurotransmitter systems, brain systems, and that can obviously have an impact on treatment. And we know from years past that the tricyclic antidepressants, which were very effective in adults with major depressive disorder, still are, even though they've largely been replaced by the SSRIs because of safety considerations. That being said, they were quite effective in adults with major depressive disorder. But when these same medications were tried and tested in children and adolescents with major depressive disorder, they've not been shown to be superior to placebo. And that, I think, was a wake-up call to all of us that, as the pediatricians have long told us, children are not just little adults, and we can't just assume that what works in adults will work in children. So what this particular analysis did is it looked at NIH, big, important, well-done controlled trials of pharmacotherapy of patients with depression, including the TORDIA study, that is the treatment of SSRI-resistant depression in adolescent, the treatment of adolescents with depression study, or TADS, that our team participated on. This was a study of 16 sites at academic centers uh, that were recruited to study best practice treatment for adolescent depression. And the Combining Medications to Enhance Depression Outcome Study, COMED, in patients with major depressive disorder. And all told, they looked at over 900 patients across the age span and look to find out were there differences in age response to particular antidepressant classes? What were the factors that best predicted treatment response or lack thereof? And so what they found was quite interesting and in some cases expected, but in other cases, if not unexpected, somewhat surprising. One, there's no question that as this article shows clearly, antidepressant treatment response varies across the lifespan, and this variation can inform differential treatment paradigms that are going to be needed in youth and adults. And what's interesting is how the response varies by age, namely that there's less improvement in younger and older individuals, and the sweet spot for response to monotherapy or combinations of antidepressant treatment appears to be between 21 and 35 years of age. So what this analysis highlights extremely well is that there's 
great variation in response to antidepressants in youth and adults and even among adults. So if you're 21 to 35, your chance of responding to monotherapy or a combination of antidepressant treatment with other treatment is much higher than it is in younger age groups and adults who are older. This study also found that women were much more likely to respond to antidepressant treatment than men. And that is something that there's a history of in that some of the tricyclic antidepressants like nortriptyline were reported very early on to have an enhanced response rate in women as compared to men. Now, the reasons for the age-related differences in response can obviously relate to a lot of factors across the lifespan. In younger patients, there is a big-time influence of family, school-related factors. We know that child and adolescent depression has a much higher rate of family history and familial loading. Now, familial loading and family history of mood disorders is high in adults, but it's even higher in children and adolescents. And we also know that there can be what's termed an expressed emotion in the family. And so families have higher rates of depression. And if the parents or siblings are depressed, that can impact the depressed youth and vice versa. So the more depressed a parent is, that can have a negative impact on the child's depression and vice versa, creating a vicious cycle. We also know, as I've mentioned before, that there are developmental factors and that various systems, the dopamine system, is continuing to develop throughout adolescence into adulthood. Similarly, glutamate that's been shown to have a very important role in depression, that system continues to develop into young adulthood. And interestingly, glutamate is the system targeted by the novel antidepressant therapy, ketamine, which is being used in treatment-resistant depression, suicidal depression with potentially more rapid effect. So there are just a whole host of factors that can be involved. But the take-home point here is that age across the lifespan, in youth, in adulthood, in older adulthood, is a key factor. And individualizing treatment based on these age variations is critically important.